morning. It is WGTV Today. It is Wednesday, March 20th. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. This is the last day of winter. Woo! Yay. Fall, uh, spring. Something. <laughs> Well, I said, winter, comes spring is coming tomorrow. That's right, the 21st of March. All My right. favorite time of year. I love it. I okay. do too. Okay, I'm Wayne Alley, by the way. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning and welcome to the show. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. It's a partnership between the County of Wayne and the City of Goldsboro. Yes, indeed. And on today's program, we will yes. enjoy hearing from uh, the Chamber's Young Professionals Organization. Yes. Uh, we also will have a demonstration from the Senior Center of Tai Chi. Wonderful. Yeah. Wait till you see this. Thane Collins is the instructor here, and he is unique. He is delightful. <laughs> I really like this guy. He is good. Wait till you see him in action. Tai Chi. And I'm excited that the uh, young professionals are on the on the show now. They're sharing yeah. what that group is all about, what their goals are, and what events they hold in the community and how they are growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, they're growing leaps and they're growing bounds. Are they? Yeah. Great. Leaps Is that bounds. a new vegetable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of green. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are excited to have them on the show. You'll learn all about them coming up soon. Trivia question for today. Yes. Let's get this started right away. Okay, Let's here's do. Here's trivia question for today. Yes. Once upon a time, a famous author said, mm -hmm. what did he say? He refused to go to the White House for, for, to eat dinner with the president. Dinner invitation from the president of the United States. And he said no. He said no. And what was his reasoning? He said, why, that's over 100 miles away. That's a long way to go just to eat. Famous author said that. Who was the president? Well, can you tell us? Well, no, you can't tell us what year it happened. I can't tell you what year it happened because, duh. Yeah. But let's put it this way. It was in the, it was in the 1900s. Okay, that helped 20th, somewhat. 20th century. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was in the 20th century, but he said... 100 miles was too far to go. He said 100 miles to eat dinner. too far to go <laughs> to eat dinner with the president, or with anybody for that matter. If you I guess he the wanted president. the president to pay his way there too. Well, yeah, I, mean, I don't there. know. I don't know. You know. I would have to say, here we go. We're finally beaming in to Wednesday it is, middle of the week, right? <laughs> what are we beaming into? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's something for you. Let's change topics. I got scared. Too. What are we being? What's going on, Wayne? <laughs> Somebody didn't know about. <laughs> I just <laughs> Captain Kirk never said, "Beam me up, Scotty." You know that? What did he say? That just reminded me. He said, uh, "He said, beam <laughs> us up, Mr. Scott," or he would also call him, always call him Mr. Scott, uh -huh. or he would call him Scotty in conversation. But he never said, "Beam me up, Scotty." Okay. Did somebody say he did? Well, no, that's a, that's a common, a, a common okay. phrase being thrown about. And when I was, when that, when that beaming thing <laughs> You just went mind, off in that. It just took, it just, I went off in another direction there. Are you a big Star Trek fan? Yeah. Are yeah, you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, well, 60%. I mean, if 100% is the ultimate. You're a 60% fan. I'm 60 to 70% fan Star Trek, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a William Shatner fan. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and, uh. Uh, anyway, I, I was a fan of the program because I was there, you see. He was there. I was there. All right. Well, let's see what's happening locally. <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> Help me out here, Not please. on Star Trek. Help me out. All right. Let's see. Oh, I want to tell you about this. Uh, serious. Please. Um, uh, a fellow by the name of G.M. Smith, he lives in the Snow Hill area. Mm -hmm. He's going to be showing a documentary at the Wayne County Museum. Um, the 24th and today's the 20th that'll be uh, this sunday mm -hmm. this sunday afternoon at two o'clock the documentary is entitled forgotten tragedy the tuscarora war now that'll be shown at the wayne county museum admission is absolutely free the film documents the fall of the tuscarora stronghold in present-day green county uh, fort neo heroka was the name of the fort and it fell uh, for three weeks in march of 1713 the force of colonial troops from South Carolina, colonial troops now from South Carolina, along with members of several other tribes, including the Cherokee and the Catawba, laid siege to the fort, which held several hundred Tuscarora men, women, and children. In an effort to end the siege, the attackers set fire to the site. Hundreds died in the blaze. Over 400 survivors were sold into slavery. Today, the site remains the single largest burial of Native Americans, uh, burial site of Native Americans in North America. 
Uh, the tragedy was the beginning of the end of the Tuscarora in eastern North Carolina. Now, wow. if you want more information about this, you can call the museum, talk to uh, Brantley or Chris. That mm -hmm. number is 919-734-5023. 734-5023. All right, Excellent. That's fascinating. Story. It really is. Let's see. Don't forget if you're interested in taking your little one over to the Arts Council to dye some eggs for Easter, oh. if you don't want that happening at home, but you'd like for them to participate, yeah. this is a great opportunity. You can take them to the Arts Council of Wayne County on Thursday, March 28th from 5 until 6 p.m. It's a $15 charge. They will be having a half a dozen eggs per person that they will color and they'll have all the supplies there for them to do it very uniquely and have lots of little extra creative things available oh to boy. your youngster. Oh Ages four and up oh are eligible to participate and that's at 102 North John Street here in Goldsboro. March is Traumatic Brain Injury Month. Yes, it is. And coming up on uh, tomorrow, in fact, tomorrow, at the uh, at Wayne Community College in the main building there in the seminar room. There will be a presentation by Sandy Worthington. She is with BIANC, which is the Brain Injury Association mm -hmm. of, North, uh, of North Carolina. Uh, B-I-A-N-C, Brain Injury Association of North Carolina. It starts at 5.30 tomorrow afternoon at Wayne Community College. Uh, it's free to the public, so I would encourage you to go, and if you want to register for this, you can register by calling Suzanne at a toll-free number, that number 1-800-913-6109. Very good. Well, who's ready to run, Wayne? You ready? I just got here. Well, we'd like for you to think about running in... Oh, I'll think about it. ...the Greater Goldsboro Road Run. It's taking place soon, April 13th. They want you to register now. Uh, this is for the Sunrise Kiwanis Club. This is their big fundraiser of the year. And I, you, I believe you've recently told us it's the second largest run in the state, or it oldest? Uh, second, second oldest. Second oldest. Second oldest second run oldest. in the state of North Carolina. Right. And that is sponsored by the Sunrise Kiwanis Club. If you would like to register or find out more about this run, you can go to runtheeast.com. And there you can find out all the information about all the different prizes that they're offering. They have a 10K run, a 5K run, 5K walk, one mile fun run. That one's calling my name. There you go. Greater Goldsboro Fun Run. All right. On this day, this is March 20th. March 20th. Uh, Jim Packard died. He was the founder of Packard Motor Car Company. Oh, yes. My grandfather had a Packard. Did he really? He sure did. It was sort of a burgundy-ish color. Really? He did, and he loved that thing and yeah. had it restored through the years. Oh, wow. Sure did. That was a, a fun topic of conversation around our household. Packards were, at one time, I mean, a gigantic luxury automobile. They were just absolutely gorgeous. They were beautiful. Of course, they changed it to try and stay with the time. Right. They changed the design years later. But it was a beautiful automobile. Lots of innovation into the uh, into the Packard. He sure had one. We love to see it. Uh, fellow with the name. You ever heard of the dime novel? Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Back in the old west, if you will, there was a fellow by the name of Ned Buntline who became really, really famous and rich by writing dime, dime novels, dime stories about what, yep. and you might say he took a lot of liberties. You might say he made a lot of stuff up. You oh, might did say, he? Well, he kind of You might would did. say that. <laughs> anyway, he wrote a lot of stories about, and, and in fact, he uh, is kind of, sort of the guy that made Buffalo Bill famous. He wrote stories about Buffalo Bill Cody, and he claimed that he uh, was the guy that created the Buffalo Bill nickname, uh, William Cody's nickname, Buffalo Bill. He really didn't. He had that nickname beforehand, but uh, he wrote a lot of stories about Wyatt Earp, about Buffalo Bill, and about the wild, wild west. Oh, yes. And it made him rich and famous. And again, a lot of this stuff he just kind of took a lot of liberties with and made up. But regardless of all that, he's also the fellow that is supposedly mm -hmm. the person, allegedly the guy that came up with the design of the button line special, which was made by supposedly, allegedly, the Colt company. <laughs> Everything is supposedly well, and allegedly. You know, you don't know you about don't ever know. Exactly. You don't know about this guy because he just, he was, well, he was creative, there to you say go. the least. But he said he had uh, the Colt, uh, Colt uh, arms people make these four or five, actually five, Buntline Special Revolvers. Gave one to Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp, well, he either did or he didn't. He gave one to Bat Masterson, one to Charlie Bassett, and one to somebody, a couple of other people. Anyway, that uh, 
uh, a lot of people think that he just made that story up. He he did have the guns. They were 12-inch barrels wow. on these rifle on these uh, on these uh, pistols, handguns, and they had a stock uh, shoulder uh, that you could attach. Anyway, something real fancy. But he was a promoter more than anything. A colorful character, Ned Buntline, born this day, 1923. Uh, also. Uh, King, uh, King Louis the Sixteenth of France mm -hmm. this day receives uh, his visitors from the colonies in the year 1778, two years after we declared independence. Ben Franklin and a couple of other guys went over to see Louis to say, look, Louis, hey, Louis, we're having a little <laughs> battle over there, you know, a little war. We'd love for you to, for France to support us in this, in this war. And Louis says, eh, I do not know. I don't know. Should I or shouldn't I? I do not know. So anyway, he, uh, Louis was, uh, not necessarily in favor of supporting the, the colonies at that time and their effort for independence, but he liked the British even less. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, you got my backing. And so the rest is history. <laughs> in fact, that was history too. But yeah. The, rest is history. the history lesson of the day. Okay. March 20th <laughs> is Fred Rogers' birthday. Mr. Rogers on television, born this day, 1928. Christy Romano is 28. She rose to popularity on Disney's Even Stevens. That's right. I remember her. Kathy Ireland, 49 mm -hmm. oh, years yeah. today. Ozzie Nelson. Ozzie Nelson. Ozzie Nelson. Ozzie, the Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. That's and that's right. A, that's a, 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 a play on words anyway because there was not a whole lot of adventure in their TV show. But uh, he was a singer and she was a singer. And they met and fell in love and all that. Anyway, the rest is history. But it was a very, very funny show. Of course, that's Ricky Nelson's parents and David Nelson's parents. David Nelson was also on the show as uh, one of the stars of the, of the TV show, but he went on to become, actually become a circus star. He was a trapeze artist. Interesting. David was. Carl Reiner turns 90 today, a birthday today for Bianca Lawson. She's 33. She portrays the role of Emily on The Vampire Diaries. Holly Hunter is 54 today, best actress in The Piano. Uh, Hal Linden, Barney Miller having a birthday at 81 today. Birthday today for Jack Berry who, if you remember the TV contest, Jack Berry uh, was involved with, was involved with a controversy. I'll tell you about that later on. And Ray Golding of Bob and Ray fame, having a birthday today. Of course, he died some years ago. Funny man. All Happy right. birthday to everybody. Yep. Let's see, coming up next, I believe we have the Tai Chi. Oh, yeah. And yes, I believe that may be all at this point in time. No, we're going on to the young professionals as well. Going on the young so we're going to see both of them both all of them together. Right Stay right. tuned. And I bet you right now, I'm going to show you that a lot of you don't really know how to relax, even though you think you do. Okay? So I'm going to give you a little test to prove my point. What I want you to do, okay, I want you to stand with your legs a little, like, shoulder width. Okay? Very easy to do. You shouldn't be straining at all. Now, if you can't stand shoulder width for some reason, stand where you're comfortable. Some people can't. You now they've got the balance problems. We'll work on that. But stand where you're comfortable. Try having your feet point straight ahead. Okay? Now, this is going to sound kind of funny. This is what I want you to do, okay? I want you to pretend you've got a silver dollar, okay? You put it between your cheeks and you just slightly press it. Okay? Slightly. Don't go too hard. Just slightly. So we're bringing our pelvic forward. So still sticking it like this, where we're standing. We're bringing our, our, our spine in alignment, okay? So this should be a very natural stance. Just stance like this. You're just standing very natural. Okay? And what I want you to do now is something very simple. I want you just to raise your hands up to your shoulders, no, high, no higher than your shoulders, and then I want you just to just drop them. Okay? I'll try that again. Just raise your hands up, drop them. Okay? One more time. Hands up. Now keep your hands there for a second. Now, what? Give me here. Give me here. <laughs> Not yet. Don't drop them yet. Now, you remember how I said you would be very relaxed? If I could touch your shoulders and feel a muscle, mm -hmm. then your shoulders are not relaxed. Relax your shoulders. There you go. Okay? You should be, if I touch your shoulders, touch that muscle there, relax even more. That's it. You should, you should have no 
tension at all in your arms. Put your arms down for a second. Because after all, this will hurt. Okay, put your arms down. Okay? So we're going to try it again. We're going to bring our arms up and just keep your elbows in like, like they're going toward each other a little bit. You kind of look like a little, like you look weak. Oh. Like your elbows in. That's the way you want to look. You want to look weak. Not like this. Okay? You're gonna, uh, they're not going to be completely straightened out. They have a slight bend in them. And your palms are toward the floor and your elbows are in slightly. Okay? If your elbow is in slightly, nobody will be able to move you from, this, from uh, the stance you want to be in. If you keep your elbows in slightly. If you open your elbows out, see how your elbows are pointing out toward the walls? They can point down. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Nice and relaxed. If I walk up to you, bam! You hit me in the head, you're wrong because you should be so relaxed that these go back. See how these all your attention. Okay? So your elbows, just relax your elbows, see? Don't worry about your moving your body, just relax. See that there? That's what you want. See? Relax the elbows. If I run into you, push your elbows, you shouldn't fall back because your elbows should move. <laughs> see? See that? Your elbows should move. See, see your whole body's going back because your elbow, right? Your whole body, if your whole body moves, you got too much tension. See? Just the elbow, that's it. Feel that? That's all you want to feel, the elbow's moving. Now, this is going to be important in a minute. Okay? Say how you, I got you pushing back, just your elbow, move your elbows, in. that's it. See? Yeah, that's it, just slightly in. So if I push, you go back, and then you just push me back. See how that side is? So I should never be able to push you over. That's it. You're there, yet you're not. Okay, put your arms down. Oh, another thing I should tell you, this is very important. I have a tendency to babble sometimes, which doesn't, the only bad thing about that is, I'll have you locked up in a stance, you will start to shake, and you'll start to hurt. So if you start to get tired, just put your arms down or stand up. Tai Chi is very rough on the legs. Okay? But we work on that. Okay? It's very rough on the legs. It's not as easy as you think. Okay? To do this. So, once again, bring your hands up. Shoulders are going to be nice and soft. Drop them down. Hands up. Drop them down. Hands up. Drop them down. Now watch. What you think what you tell your mind that you want to accomplish, your mind is going to work toward that goal. What you're thinking will affect your physical abilities. Okay? So what you think. Now I'm going to prove it to you. Okay? I want you to be in that same stance where you're just like, with feet here, you're just tucked in. But I want you to think that someone comes, comes up to you and puts a rod in your head and bangs a rod, a long rod from your head down to the floor. I want you to think of your heels being stuck to the ground. And that there's rods that come from your hips to your ankles directly into the ground. Okay? That's all I want you to think. Okay? So you bend your knees a little bit. They think you weigh like 100 pounds, 200, 300 pounds. Let's say 500 pounds. You weigh 500 pounds. Okay? You feel everything pulling down. But it's not pulling, it's relaxing. Okay? You want to feel very rooted to the, to, the, uh, to the ground. This is very important. Feel very rooted. You shouldn't sway left or right. Rooted. Okay? So watch. I'm going to come around and try to push you over. I shouldn't be able to, if you're thinking right. If you're thinking wrong, you may go flying off to God knows where. Okay? So you want to think, just nice and relaxed. And your posture is still just nice and relaxed. Okay? Not pushing her. She's going nowhere. Now watch this. I want you to do exactly what you were doing. Make yourself posture down, right? Think heavy, heavy, heavy. See how I can't push her? Keep everything exactly like it is, but think like a feather. Yeah, but keep your, keep your, stick, your, your stance the same. But you want to think like you're lightheaded. Okay? <laughs> Do you see what happened? When she thought, even though she was in the same position, she thought something different, and her balance and her, her energy went away. It just went away. So you always want to be thinking. When you do the Tai Chi, when you're supposed to be sinking into the stances, you're a rock. When you're supposed to be moving from place to place, you're a feather. You're a rock. Okay, so when you move, everything flows. You're up, you're down. You're solid, boom. Uh -oh. okay. no, you're weak. Okay.
Okay, so we're going to practice this. Okay, so you're going to be here. And you bring your hands up. You take your light, 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 light. You bring your hands up to your shoulders. You take your heavy, heavy, heavy. You bring your hands down. So let's breathe in as you come up. Breathe out as you come down. In. Down. Now, if you watch my arms, if you're doing this, see how your elbows are pointing out that way? Mm -hmm. You're too strong. If you're too strong, the man will overpower you. You have to be weak to keep those elbows in. Only use as little energy as you have to. Remember, you only have a certain amount of energy. So use it sparingly. Be as lazy as you can. Mm -hmm. right? okay, when he comes up with his arms up, as lazy as you can be. You put it down as lazy as you can be. It's, oh, it feels so good this time. So we're up, we're down. Now your body's mad at you. you. Know why your body's mad at you? The idea of why your body's mad at you right now? You don't have any idea. You didn't invite your whole body to the party. <laughs> you invited certain things to the party. The rest of your body is mad, so it's going to affect your balance and your stance and everything else you do. This is what I mean by that. When we have our knees bent, okay? When we raise our hands up, well, our whole body comes up. When we bring ourselves down, we bend our knees again. Up. Down. Okay. Breathe in. Body comes up. Breathe out. Body comes down. Okay. So ready? Now we have nothing to add in. We've got body movement, arm movement. Now we have to time it with our breath. You want to you be able to breathe in, everybody will be different, through your nose. So when you get to here, you can't breathe in anymore. And when you breathe out, you have to time it, breathing out. So when you get to here, your breath is totally gone. Don't do this. <laughs> it, it has to be timed perfectly. Up, and you come down, it has to be timed perfectly. You come down, everything stops at the same time. That's it. So again, up. Down. Perfect. Okay, up again. Down. That particular move has a tremendous amount of power. Just by you were doing, like you were doing it right there, you could take somebody and throw them to a floor like a little sack of potatoes. No harder, you don't try any harder than that. You don't go, huh? Ah, this is up. Uh, up. Uh, yeah. Let me prove my point. We borrow this gentleman here for a second. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is that I want you to throw it to the ground like a sack of potatoes. It's just that I want you to show you how we, how we test our postures to make sure they're correct. Okay, so he has his hands here. Okay? I'm just going to bring my hands up, try to hold them tight. Up. Now. <laughs> See how I had to pull him down? I could have pulled him half. Yeah, I could have slammed him down. He cannot resist me because I resist me. If I go hard, now watch this. If I try to use strength, elbows out. See? When I go slow, he doesn't, he doesn't remember. When I go up like this, I resist. When I go like this, ooey. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> See? I'm going with him. I'm relaxed. There's no power at all. So if you do that, that's what you got to think. That's what you got to be thinking. You got to be thinking. Well, nice and weak. Down. Yeah, that's the first move in the form. Let me show you what I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to show you the first few moves that you're going to be learning. Watch me for a second. I'll do this one. You're going to be learning the moves to go. First few moves. We're going to be teaching the first few moves. It's easy because it's only one move done three times. Not <laughs> very much, okay? So, but this is going to be where it's going to get tough on your legs, okay? Because like anything else, 
okay, in life. Everything has to be done in moderation. And there are, in the Tai Chi, we pretty much go from one extreme to the next, but with an even flow, which means, you know, I'm gonna try this, okay? See how we're standing? All we're gonna do, we're gonna take all of our weight and put it on our right leg. And stay just like, we'll say, just like this, all our weight on our right leg. Now, as much as you can. Okay? You can't put as much as you can, that's fine, just like that. Now, hold on to that position for a second. Stay like that, okay? If you are truly on one, if, you're, if you truly have all your weight on one leg, if I go to sweep your foot, I shouldn't trip, nor should you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what happens is your foot should move. But there's no weight on it. Okay? Not only is there no weight on it, so that this leg. This leg here, if I touch it, should be very, very soft, and this muscle should be very, very hard. <laughs> because all the weight, boom, muscle, see, soft, see that? Hard, soft, right? When you do that, I can tell that your stance is correct. Get that weight in the right leg. You stand up, shake your leg up. Anybody's legs cramping up yet? Good. Okay? It will in a second, so like I told you, if it starts to hurt, stop. That makes some sense. Okay. Wait. We're going to turn our left foot up. So that our left foot points to the, to the uh, roof. All the weight is on our back leg. It's still very light. Now, this mistake people make when they do this. They go, why are you hard about that? Your navel has to be pointing directly toward that wall. Okay. And you wait, bend that back leg more. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. You can't go all the way. Just put your the way you do it. If you can't do that all front, just run your way into it. Why are you tripping me? Hey, more. Bend his leg more. That's it. Just leg, leg, leg. Do that. Do that. Sit back on that back leg. There you go. You feel that back leg? Good. You feel that back leg? Mm-hmm. You feel it, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. I don't want you. See, you're leaning like you're going to. Always straight up. Always think as if you're moving with something on top of your head. Okay? And you try to stay at the same height throughout the whole form. So when you drop here, you might drop here. Some people are, they go, oh, they go way down. Well, if you do, that means the whole rest of your form has to be done from this height. <laughs> that hurts. Okay, so whatever you drop to here, whatever height, that's the height you're going to stay at as you start moving through this form. Okay? Let's try. First move. I'll show you the first move. First move is easy, y'all. Huh? It goes too fast, we're down. Second move, we put all of our weight in our right leg. We turn. My toes pointing up. Like that. That's not bad, bad, is it? Let's try it again. Let's throw a wrench into it. Okay? Okay, nice relax. Okay. That's good. Right? I'll try to push you over. No mercy. Okay. Good. Good. Solid. Okay, so first, I was trying to run into him. Boom! Just run into a wall. Okay. Make my glasses do it. Okay. Now, go ahead and do this part. Should you wait? Turn. Okay, 
Stand up, stand up for a second. Your hands, and I'm going to shake your hands, dude. This is kind of difficult. But once you get the hands down once, you do it three times in a row. You get used to it. When you put all your weight in your right leg, you're going to reach out with your right hand like you're grabbing a big ball. Big beach ball. So you got one hand on top, one hand on the bottom. Your right hand's on top. Okay? When you grab this beach ball, grab it very, very gentle. Remember, we got to be as lazy as we can. Now, this is the hard part. You turn, your hands are still here. As you come forward, you're going to bring your left hand out in front of you and your right hand down to your waist. It's basically going to turn and end up like this. Okay. The right hand, we, we, the palm will be facing down. Okay? So let's try it again. Let me show you again, okay? We lean it, we grab, first we turn, left hand comes up in front of us to our face, right hand comes down to our waist. Right hands do. Let me do the hands again. Just do it again. I'm gonna make sure you do it right. When you turn the left, the toes still pointing up. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna work it on one second. But you're right. As you turn them left, the toes still pointing up. But right now, I have you just stepping down, moving your hands because I'm gonna show you how to do that. But you're not gonna move your foot again in a minute. Okay? So it's just here. If we just practice it right from here. From here, turn. Left hand will be up by your face. Right hand will be down. It's almost like you're back here. It's like a natural movement. Hey, again, ready? Here, grab that ball, turn, step. Man, just let me bring your hands out. We're gonna step in a minute, okay? Your left hand stays right about it, your heart. Your right hand stays by your waist. The elbow is in. Just like this. Nice and relaxed. Okay? That's the finished posture. Okay. Uh, when you stood, sure. is your wife going to be Welcome back to Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm excited to say we have a new group with us today for the very first time. This is Stuart Bryan and Megan, say your last name for me. Bourgeois. Bourgeois. They are here from the Young Professionals here in Wayne County. Welcome guys. Thank, Thank you. Good morning. Tell us what is the Young Professionals and, and who is it connected to? Connected to the Chamber of Commerce in Wayne County. We're four years old. It's an age group of 21 to 40 and we began it because there wasn't a lot for people in that age group to do and we wanted to have something where that age group could network, socialize, <clears throat> as well as get involved in the community <clears throat> through different avenues. Perfect. Well, I know you guys have been working hard these last few years getting this organization moving forward and finding your niche. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys have done that. I'm really excited that you're, you're on the show today and you're sharing with the community exactly what Young Professionals is all about. So Megan, tell me some of the things that the community don't know about Young Professionals. Okay, um, we do have a lot of community involvement that the community is a part of. We have our annual Toys for Tots drive, our kickball tournament. We participate every year in Pig in the Park. Um, we have a big event every year called our Monster Bash, which is kind of our it's our social drive, really, to just get more members. Mm -hmm. um, when I came back from college, I grew up in Goldsboro, but when I moved back home after college, where do you start? Because you have the social life in high school, and you have it in college or wherever you are, right. and when you move to a new place, um, you don't really know where to start. So especially being um, a part of a small business, it's a great way to get involved and to meet people maybe that you didn't know, even if you did grow up here. Um, so it's been a great networking tool, but also a way to get involved in just the community, um, with our Habitat for Humanity Days, just anything we do, it's a great way to get involved in many different aspects. 
Well, you guys have a long list of things that you are active in mm -hmm. through the Chamber of Commerce and just other things within our community. And how can people find out about that information, what, what you're involved in? Right. Well, um, we do have a website within the Chamber of Commerce page. Um, we, of course, have a Facebook page we keep up to date with our events coming up. Um, we, like to, we try to advertise when we have our bigger events around town, so you'll see that. Um, but just you can become a part of our newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter on the Chamber website or contact the Chamber if you have any questions. You don't necessarily have to join. Um, you could just get our newsletter to find out more. Um, it is $30 a year to be a member, but you can come check us out. You don't have to pay that. Come see what we're about and see if you're interested. So the best thing to do is call the Chamber of Commerce or go Definitely. straight to that website. And what tab is it under? Do you remember? Um, participate. Participate. And there's the different sectors you can get involved in and Young Professionals is exactly. right under there. Great. Well, so Young Professionals is wonderful for people that have just moved to our community. Definitely. The base. I know you guys have so many individuals from the base mm -hmm. that have joined your group and that are, are interested in being a part of it. What benefits can it be for them? Well, just to get to know people, only not just the networking part, but just to get to know people on the social aspect um, and just to know more about our community, the things we get involved in locally. Um, it's a way for them to see what we're about and the things that Goldsboro is about that we participate in as well. Well, I know you guys are very proud of that, that you open your doors and you really invite uh, men and women from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base to come and be a part of it mm -hmm. along with the rest of our community. Um, this is a great organization that you guys have started and that you're really working on because when people move back from college or you're just moving to this area, you are looking a place to fit in, a, a something right. to do, uh, a place to feel like that's your niche, that's your area, and Young Professionals is just perfect for that. Definitely. I'm glad that you guys ha have got it and you're taking hold. Now something that the community may not be aware of, you guys are run by a board. Mm -hmm. So right. tell me more about that. We have a, an executive board which is currently five members and we have <coughs> excuse me, monthly meetings first Wednesday of every month we do those and everyone's invited member or not to come to that to see what we're all about right. to learn what is going on what time of day are they here it's usually 5 p.m. at the chamber okay and just get on the website for the chamber and that information will be on there wonderful and one of the the biggest things that we've tried to make an effort to do this year is create different time slots of when we have events. Okay. A lot of people cannot do stuff in the evenings, whether it's family obligations, work obligations. Right. So we've created programs that go in the morning, afternoons, as well as the evening to allow people to be able to participate. Whatever works for their way. schedule. Right, exactly. Well, that is great that you're being very accommodating and you're recognizing mm -hmm. that people have schedules because this age group is can be very much the age group of right. young moms and dads. Sure. You know, new jobs, mm -hmm. things happening in their home life, and you're right, they may not be able to participate at night, but they could right. afternoon or could morning, and I know mm -hmm. you've recently had mm -hmm. some, some morning events right. that went really well. Yeah. Well, and a lot of our members are part of so many other organizations. They have meetings after work. Mm -hmm. So the morning breakfasts and lunches and things are a way they can still be involved. Well, you both are, are actually from Goldsboro. Yes, mm -hmm. Tell me what roles you play with the young professionals. Um, the chair, current chair, and Megan is the co-chair. So we have the chair and the co-chair mm -hmm. right here being our very first time on the show telling us what Young Professionals is all about. I thank you guys for coming today and, yes, and sharing a little bit about what's happening. But I encourage you, if you are new to the community and you would like to get involved, go to the Chamber's website. It's waynecountychamber.com and look up Young Professionals and see their list of activities they have. Give them a call, come to a meeting, check them out, see if it's something you might be interested in being a part of. We appreciate you guys sharing and hope you'll come back on a regular basis to Thank give us you. updates. One last thing that we didn't share, some exciting news that you guys are taking over something pretty big in the city of Goldsboro. What might that be? It is the annual Christmas parade. We are taking that over from the JCs, and more information will be coming about that. October is usually when it starts really getting rolling to do that, but we are taking that task on this year. Wow, good it. job. That is going to be a big, big task to take on, but I feel confident that you guys can do it and handle it with, with flair. And is there someone that's going to be your, your consistency from the chamber and through the, um, the JCs who used to coordinate you this? You can contact the chamber anytime about, um, we'll get forms out, um, the News Argus will have all the usual things we have in there. Um, and we will have a pinpoint, we will have almost a separate board that will be handling the parade separate from our executive board that will kind of have the different contacts between the city, um, the floats, all different people involved. 
Wonderful. We'll have definitely more information about that. And too. a little birdie told me you had a member from the JCs that is also a member of Young Professionals, yes. and mm -hmm. he's going to sort of carry that torch from one organization to the next. Yep. A lot of people didn't know the JCs did it all these years, and they've done it for what more than 50 years yep. almost. Oh yes. Yep. Um, and so they passed that torch on to us. So we're really excited. Mm -hmm. Well, we are happy for you. We wanted to make that announcement here today that the Young Professionals of Wayne County is taking over the Goldsboro Christmas Parade. We're excited for you guys and Thank expecting you. great things out of your organization. Thank you. Thanks so much. This is what's happening with Wayne County Young Professionals. All right, that was great. The Tai Chi and then the Young Professionals, that's, some, that's great information. It really is, and I'm glad they're continuing to come on the show now. The Young Professionals will be yeah. a part on our show every month. That was great. Sharing what's happening here in the community that the young people are doing. And the Tai Chi instructor, Thane Collins, actually lives in the D.C. area and was visiting here. I think his parents live here and was doing a great job out at the Senior Center. Hope to see him again very soon. Great job. There. Wonderful. All right. I had mentioned the birthday of a fellow by the name of Jack Berry a little while ago. Mm -hmm. Jack Berry was a game show host and producer and had been for many, 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 many years. And back in the mid-50s, there was a national outrage at one of his programs. What he did was, he do? He, he was the host of a program called 21. And there was a contest where the, uh, where the, uh, there was kind of a trivia kind of a show, mm -hmm. which is so popular. And uh, they would be asking information. The thing is, though, the contestants were in these soundproof booths. Okay. Wearing headphones. <coughs> mm -hmm. And the headphones were to Jack Berry, who stood in front of the soundproof booths, and asked the questions. And the, the, uh, the opposing contestant could not hear the question that the... the okay, contestant so they didn't have time to think about it. That's right. Now, there was cheating going on. Really? The contestants were given the answers before the show and were told what to say. Oh wow! Charles Van Doren was the was the winner of that particular that particular program, and uh, and then shortly after that, and this was on NBC, and NBC mm -hmm. of course didn't know anything about it, and in fact Jack Berry, I think he was he was found to be innocent of the charges of cheating, but it really it almost ruined his career completely. Wow. He was out of the picture for many many years, but he finally came back years later doing other other TV shows. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was cheating going on, and it was it was pretty big. Yeah, that'll do uh, it. it was, and that will do it. But that was, a, that was an outrage that made a lot of people angry. And uh, anyway, there were a lot of laws that went into effect following that program and better programming well, maybe we needed as well. It. Yeah. We, and we did need it. We, we did. Need it. All right. Anyway, that was uh, Jack <coughs> Berry who died in 1984. He was, a, he was the host of a TV show called Tic Tac Doe and 21. Wonderful. <coughs> Want to remind you about the legislative breakfast is coming up <coughs> next week. March 22nd, mm -hmm. Friday, Lane Tree Golf Club. If you're interested in attending, this week, it's this week actually, if you're interested in attending, you do need to pre-register. Uh, you can call the Chamber of Commerce at 734-2241. Uh, it's $15 if you're a chamber member. If you're a non-member, it's $20 to attend, of course, and you get breakfast, and then you get to hear what your legislators up in Raleigh are thinking, and these are our local legislators right. that are representing us at the General Assembly in Raleigh. Right. All right. <coughs> eggs and issues is the name of it. Eggs and issues. Eat a little eggs. Here are the issues. <laughs> That's right. I love eggs. From That's my great. head down to my legs. <laughs> birthdays. Well, we mentioned birthdays uh, yes, on this we day. The, the, today is the. Uh, well, I did that as well. Yep. Okay. What do you have? <laughs> well, let's see. Well, I have to, the answer to today's. Oh trophy. yeah, we, we definitely throw that in there right now. We definitely need to throw that uh, in. The. Uh, a famous author once said, when invited to the White House to have dinner with the president, and oh, yes. would you go to that? Yeah, of course I, I, I would. would. too, regardless of who was president, probably would. Yeah, But why he not? said, uh, well, that's over 100 miles away. That's a long way to go just to eat. William Faulkner said that, and the president was John F. Kennedy. Really? Yeah, he refused to, to go because, not because he had anything against Kennedy, he's a right. big supporter of Kennedy, but... He just didn't want to go that far to eat dinner. Oh, well, each to their own. Indeed. That's what makes the world go around. That's right. Let's see, Wayne, I want to tell you some little tidbits. <clears throat> For people in their golden years, we have got a list of some dogs that are the best breeds for people in their golden years to have. Okay. You know, because think about it. There's certain dogs that you want when, you're, when you have young children in your home. 
That's true. Yeah. Uh, there's certain dogs that you want when you're older as well. That's true. So I can listen. see uh, for children in the home, you want a, a dog that's going to be protective, that's going to be playful, but not rough. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And for older people, you want a dog that's going to be protective. and Maybe not quite as playful. Not quite as playful and <laughs> not rough. There you go. So let's see what some of them are. Okay. What are they? Well, one is the French Bulldog. Ah, uh, we is the French Bulldog. <laughs> yeah, I love that little rascal. Yeah. <laughs> Martha Stewart's one of the A-list celebrity fans of the French Bulldog. They are cute. Yes, they are. Then another one is the Poodle. I once stepped in a Poodle. <laughs> There's a reason why Poodles have remained popular oh, decade oh. after decade, oh, especially with older people. Yeah. They're personable, easy to train, and have a lively sense of humor. They laugh with you, not at you. Now, how do we know that? <laughs> they are also relatively clean. Good question. Low shedding dog <clears throat> who are easy to maintain as long as you keep regular grooming appointments. Mm -hmm. The poodle is part of an original popular crossbreed, the cockapoo. Hmm, interesting. And the labradoodle. There's many types of poodles. Yeah. So interesting. Let's say another dog is the Maltese. I have a Maltese. Oh. A Maltese that says if you want a dog who sheds the least, Get a small, long-haired dog. Keep your pet clip short. The Maltese fits the bill perfectly, although the Maltese in the show ring is perfectly groomed, shimmering, wave-length, floor-length hair. Yeah, that's right. Most of them do have that floor-length hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you can cut it in a puppy cut, which is what a lot of people do. That's what I do. So it's a very short-cut mm -hmm. white dog, mm -hmm. typically. Mm -hmm. And they are great for older people. And the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Oh, yeah. A friend yeah. of mine has a Corgi. It says they're, um, if you're more on the go or more active and comfortable with a dog who's smart, determined, strong-willed, these dogs might be a good fit. Long known as the dog favored by England, England's Queen Elizabeth. That's true. Yeah. She also fancy her, fancies her dorgies. <laughs> a double dose of short-legged offspring of the Corgi. Yeah. A dorgie is a double dose of the short legging. He's an offspring of the corgi and a dachshund. How about oh, that? A dachshund and a corgi is a dorgie. Is a dorgie. <laughs> How about that? So you got to. You may not have known that the dachshund and the corgi. I didn't know that. that that's where the short legs come from. I that's guess. exactly oh, right. All right. You never know. Then there's I one I can't that. pronounce. Uh, I think that's a shipperkey. You think that's what that is? Tell us uh, a little about him. One of the more long-lived dogs, <laughs> the Shipperky, is a sturdy little breed with an easy care coat and a shoe button eyes. And they're always asking, what next? So if you live with a skip, as they're called, the answer could be absolutely anything. <laughs> uh, you could uh, take up kayaking or buy a sailboat. You could even move on to a sailboat and head for a round-the-world venture. Uh, equipped with a life preserver in case he goes overboard. Uh -oh. Skip will love you because, <laughs> after all, this breed was developed for onboard living as a oh. ship's ratter from Belgium. Interesting. So they, their heritage is living on a ship. There you go. So that's a few breeds. <coughs> if you are interested in getting a dog, that these seem to fit in that lifestyle very well. Very nice. <coughs> all right. All right. Right. Where are we now? I believe we are wrapping it up for oh, the we? day. Is yes, we are. That's it. We just got here. Time has flown by. Flown by? It certainly has. Right. We'll tell you more about uh, Dancing with the Stars of Wayne County tomorrow, give you some details, and maybe actually even list who those 15 local community members are do we have that? that are Dancing with the Stars. I believe we do. Okay. All so that's tomorrow morning. All right. So join us at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll be here at 7 o'clock. Repeat at noon at 5.30 and then again some other time during the evening. But well, join us here every day here Monday through Friday on WGTV. That's Channel 10 and Channel 99. Wayne Goldsboro Television. That's exactly right. So until tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.